On this week's video, we are watching the video that you voted for. That's right, my entire schedule was thrown into disarray and this video wasn't supposed to come out until July, but I bumped it up a few weeks earlier and this is the video that you guys voted that you wanted to see. We're talking about The Blob. This is a movie and a sequel and probably one of the greatest remakes of all time. And we're gonna check out their continuity and see just how liquid that it is. So way back in 1958, the blob first oozed onto screens, kinda literally. It kicks off with Helen Crump and Stephen Freakin' McQueen seeing a meteor crash. They're teenagers, although Steve was almost 30, yet looked around 45. An old man discovers the meteor, which contains a bunch of snot that climbs onto his hand, so they take him to the dock where it grows into an armful of delicious jello. Pretty soon it's eaten the whole man and is this little rolly ball. They try to hit it with acid and shoot it, but neither works. A big calendar at the police station lets us know that we're set in July of 1957, and eventually everyone ends up at a movie theater showing Daughter of Horror, which is a re-released version of 1955's Dementia and Bella Lugosi. I'm not sure if they were just playing a Lugosi movie and refused to say which one it was, or Bella himself was there just waiting to come out after the first movie was over to say, hi. Interesting trivia, the voiceover in the movie that they're watching is a young Ed McMahon. And pretty soon the blob's grown after eating various people around town. Oddly enough, Steve passes this calendar saying that it's August of 1957, so I guess this story was just plan planning ahead a little bit. And our gooey guy gets into the movie theater and globs out of the projection booth. And we have to assume that it ate a bunch of the movie watchers since it's huge now. When our heroes become trapped, they discover that the creature hates the cold. So they blast it with a bunch of fire extinguishers until it freezes over and then drop it in the Arctic where they say it'll stay as long as the Arctic stays cold. So I figure we've got about, I don't know, like another 10 years or so before that, that sucker's free. A sequel was a long time in coming, 14 years in fact, and we didn't see more until 1972's Beware the Blob. Keep in mind that it's not Beware the Blob, it's Beware the Blob. For some reason, Chester here, who has just returned from placing a pipeline at the North Pole, has brought back a sample of Blob, and it thaws. It starts eating right away, and Chester actually watches the original Blob on the TV, so I guess this is a separate continuity or something? Although the blob actually was in the Arctic, so I suppose the events of the first film happened and someone made a film version of it and that's what we, what we watched. Dick Van Patten shows up. <laughs> hey, can you pass some of that this way? Stores are still a little low over here. What happens next is less of a movie and more of a collection of skits involving hippies and squares. Be $400. Okay. Including Captain Spaulding as a cop, a baby-faced Garrett Graham in a gorilla suit, and the penguin as a hobo. And in the middle is J.R. Ewing as a hobo, who also directed the picture. Instead of a movie theater, the blob now attacks a bowling alley, growing massive in size and at times being an obvious balloon. Luckily, Bobby spills some ice and they figure out that its weakness is the cold, and they freeze the skating rink they're in, which happens like... instantly. Unfortunately, a TV news crew uses hot lights to let it loose, so it's not over, I guess. There's no visible dates in this one, but it's clearly set in the early 70s, so let's roll with 1972. And all right, here we go, a movie that I was genuinely excited about re-watching. In 1988, they decided to give it another go with The Blob, a remake of the original, 30 years later. Directed by Chuck Russell of Nightmare 3 fame, we're in a small rural town with Jigsaw's apprentice, son of Donovan, and little Johnny Drama. Another meteor lands, just like the classic, and it's once again discovered by an old man who needs to be a little more cautious about where he places his stick. There's a calendar in the kitchen that at least lets us know that it's October, but it's pretty hard to make out. 
but I'm pretty sure that it lines up with the October of 1985, so that appears to be our year. And Paul and Meg end up taking the old man to the hospital. Jack Nance pops in to see the carnage, and in the movie's big surprise, Paul, who has filled the Steve McQueen role up to this point, gets blobbed. And it's really gross, look at this. It's kinda awesome. The deputy is a guy who knows a thing or two about people melting, and when he grills Flag, he gives the comeback that I still use to this day. We could call his dad if anyone knew who he was. Hey, uh, call a shrink, I'm a broken man. The goo starts making its presence known, and although the earlier films didn't really show you too much of what happened after it got you, this one shows you in pretty crazy detail, and it's one of the most horrible ways to die in all of horror, and in my opinion. Thankfully, the government is here, because the globby guy can now shoot out these tentacles to grab you. It once again attacks a movie theater, now much larger, while Flag discovers the movie's other big curveball. That meteor wasn't a meteor, and the blob is a creation of the military. Next, they do that rare movie trick of killing off one of the kid characters, like, not just randomly killing, they show you that he's melting. It erupts in the middle of town, and how's this for cool? It lands on this guy right before he pulls the pins on his grenades, and in the next shot, you can see them explode inside of it. It can flatten you instantly now, but Meg figures out it doesn't like the cold, and weirdly, Flag gets a snowmaker truck, but he left to go get it before they figured the cold thing out, so I guess he just went to go get the truck and got lucky, or maybe he guessed it from their earlier cooler incident. The deputy has to split, and Meg blows the truck up, creating a blast of cold that crystallizes El Blabo. They're triumphant, but a crazy preacher has kept a piece of it. Fun fact, he lost an eye here and has an eye patch, and this same actor is a hobo in Beware the Blob with an eye patch. There have been multiple plans to remake the Blob again, but none have ever gelled. Sorry. Back in 2009, Rob Zombie was connected to the project, but it never happened, although if you close your eyes, I'm sure that you can picture the Blob rolling through a trailer park while everyone yells at each other. Simon West, most known for action films, was also tied to a remake back in 2015, but there's been no word on that for quite a while, so I think it's safe to say that its chances have also melted. So there you have it, it's three movies that don't really have a continuity with each other. Um, you know, you have the first movie, which is a great classic American monster movie of the 1950s. It's like one of the best examples of like those 50s monster movies that you can kind of find. Um, you have the second one, which is a sort of a separate continuity because they're watching the original one on TV, so it's kind of hard to say that it's in the same universe. It, it's up in the air. But it is also an interesting movie to watch. It's not as good as uh, the original, um, but it's definitely its own thing. It's a very interesting time capsule of the early 70s. Um, it was rather fascinating to watch just for that facet alone. Um, some strange stuff in that one, but it was pretty fun. And then, of course, the remake, uh, The Chuck Russell Blob, which is a fantastic movie that I would recommend watching. If you haven't already seen it, it's one that you should check out. It's one of the movies I always bring up whenever people slam remakes. You bring up The Thing, bring up The Fly, and I bring up The Blob. Amazing movies that took their original source material and basically upped it to the next level. Um, so check that out one if you, if you haven't seen it already. It's, it's one that should be on your list for like tonight. Go watch it. Um, well, let me know what you thought of these down below. Let me know your opinions on the Blob movies and its continuity. Uh, a lot of you guys definitely wanted to see this one, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff down below. Um, let me know what other ones you want to see in the future, because again, you know, I, I, do, I do take requests. It, it takes me quite a while to get to them because I do have a lot of things planned out. Um, my plan for this entire year did get thrown into upheaval, um, first by the pandemic and secondly by my computer breaking down, so my um, schedule is a little all over the place, but so bear with there. Um, thank the guys over here for being my patrons because they're awesome for supporting the channel. Um, you can support the channel as well too if you go to Patreon and, uh, and kick over some cash to the channel, help keep it going. Um, or you could just keep watching the videos, which also helps to support the channel. Um, so thank you for doing that as well. And I will see you very shortly for another great video. Thanks guys, bye.